All right, guys, we're going to do something a little bit different. I have watches to make like a watch video on, but just kind of not in the mood. And I really want to get this notice sized up. I just got this in yesterday. This was a what they're calling the vault notice, and I'll do a full video on it. But it, it's a uh, watch that I spec'd out and they actually assembled for me. It's a one of one. So this is the only one you'll see with the uh, notice retrospect with the yellow dial and that orange hand and then the uh, polished uh, hour hand. So really what I was going to do here is um, maybe the topic could be this is the process I go through when I first get a watch and I do like a little bit of an inspection kind of. I mean it's not like a full-on inspection but essentially I've already taken it out of the packaging and I took the uh, protective layer off the, the top. That usually frees up the bezel. I'm a bezel junkie like a lot of you guys so I'm going to check the bezel right. Excellent bezel action and uh, feels consistent all the way through and uh, lines up and it just kind of settles back into place. It's not really play. So that's really good. Now there's some other checks you could do before you even take the uh, plastic wrap off the bracelet. If you wanted to fire the watch up, you could unscrew the crown. Um, typically you don't get a crazy pop with uh, some of these uh, NH style movements. This, is, this should have the Seiko NH 35 in it, so it's the date on the 6 o'clock there. You just want to check the wind. It has a nice, good, smooth, clean wind to it. You can see the seconds hand jumps into action there. So we're going to we're gonna do a little bit more winding on this because, you know, after I get it sized up and everything like that, I'll throw it on the time grapher and check it real quick. It's not going to have a full wind on it, so I'm not expecting stellar performance. But Notice does actually do a little bit of regulation on their movements. Um, or so they claim. Um, I think they actually do because the ones I've checked in the past were pretty accurate. So now you could also pop it out. Um, well, I don't know where we're at AM or PM, so I'm not going to set the date, but we're going to pull it out to the final position. Check for what crown wobble we have. There's just a touch there, nothing major. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and check the hands, make sure there's no interference. Typically, you'd go a little bit slower than that, but I've already checked this one. And uh, also the alignment. So like when you get to the 12, any brand that is um, good at setting hands, um, well, I don't know how to say that actually, but all watches you get when you come up to the hours or especially the 12, you should have perfect alignment with your hour and minute. That's a proper hand setting. So you just kind of take that and check it. Um, and then uh, go ahead and cycle it around if you want. I like to know I'm in the a.m. before I do a date change, and uh, I don't even know what today is. Today's the 7th, so we might as well go ahead and set the time and date on this. Uh, shoot, did I go around? Yeah. Okay, so now we're in the p.m., and it is... I mean, I could have stopped it and set the thing, but the NH movements uh, rotate so quick. Sometimes I find it quicker to just keep on rotating around. So, and I, I'm not going to set it to the second or anything like that. It's It's very close. So we'll go ahead and push that in. And then if you're not familiar with a watch, I tend to backspin the screw down crown and in, in, uh, while you're pushing in and you'll feel that thread drop into place and then you can screw it back in and make sure it screws in properly. That way you don't risk any cross threading or anything like that, if that makes sense. So when you're, let me see if I can explain that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to show it and this one doesn't feel like it has a problem, but before you just push it in and screw it clockwise, tighten, back spin it as you're pushing in and you'll feel a thud and you'll hear it and then while you're pushing in go ahead and screw it in that is the thread from the crown and the thread from the tube lining up and you know you're not going to cross thread so that is a safe way to do that so now we've done those checks I don't know how long this video is going to be because I usually struggle all right I'm going to try to push through this but um, I am wearing this Traska mint dial watch, just so you're wondering. This was sent in, and I'm pretty much going to buy it. The other thing I wanted to point out while I'm messing around with this is off to the right, I have my computer, and I have a um, video going. I pretty much stream a YouTube ch channel video all the time, especially with right now with the ads being lower with everything that's going on. The uh, ad revenue is dropped for a lot of channels. And if it's a channel that does it, you know, like full time for a living, um, then I pretty much will stream. This bracelet's crazy big. So 
and each link gets a little weird, so we're going to have to remove a few links. But um, I pretty much try to stream a video all the time. That way it helps it helps their channel out a little bit because uh, pretty much everybody's channel right now is their income's about half, I guarantee it. So um, let's see. Um, I could start out with two on each side, but man, this we're going to have to remove some links, that is for sure. But we also have six micro dress here, so I'm not going to remove this plastic or the plastic on the back here yet because I'm going to be fiddling around with these screws and everything like that. So um, i got to tell you guys, I, I bought a bunch of screwdrivers and I haven't tried them all, but this one right here has been working really good for me. Um, it's on the smaller side, and these screws are really not that small, so it's a little... It's a little smaller than it actually needs to be for this, but, um, and you could get a little, see, I'm kind of doing things just wild the way I do it, but you get yourself one of these little blue blocks here to help steady the bracelet. It might actually help you a little bit. And these screwdrivers are sharp. So slow movements with these, because if you slip off, you are going to jab your finger and you're going to be not a happy camper. So I kind of usually will push my finger up against it to guide it. Otherwise, sometimes the slot will slide out on the screw. This seems like it's nice hardware. So just keep unscrewing it until, you, again, you'll, you'll feel and hear the um, snap of the uh, threads run out. So these weren't super tight. So definitely once I get these um, completely sized and figured, I'm going to put the screws that are remaining I'm gonna um, put a little purple Loctite on them to hold them in place because these were not very tight. That's another thing I wanna point out when you're sizing these all up and everything. Um, you might wanna count on. Now these tweezers here, I have no idea where they came from. They are USA made. I swiped them for my wife and these tips are actually aluminum so they're very less likely to uh, scratch things up. So I took two links out of that side. I'm going to take two links out of the other side, and uh, we'll see how we sit. And then once we get it dialed in, then we can uh, Loctite these. Same thing with this hardware. Back it up a little bit. Feel that thread drop in because you're dealing with pretty small thread on these. And, that, and like I said, I'm just pushing my finger up against this. That kind of keeps the um, screwdriver staying in the, in the slot of the screw. And you don't have to get crazy with that because remember, we're going to come back to that. So let's do, let's do two links on this side. We might be okay pulling out. I know it was like really long, but um, we might be okay pulling out two links out of each side. Because when you do H-links, H-link bracelets are a little funky. Because you're gonna, when you pull the H link out, you have to pull a center link with it too. You know, because you can't put, um, you have to have that center piece to combine the H's. I didn't feel that one come out of its thread, but it must have, because we're free spinning. See what I mean? Like when you remove an H link, it's actually the H and that. But these are pretty short H links. There are longer ones, and there's definitely shorter ones out there, too. I try, I also typically, I didn't do it here, but I also try to remember which screw I pulled out of which link because it's already been in those threads, so it's a little more likely to line up good. See, I just jabbed myself there. That was getting a little careless, but I let up. <laughs> That was lucky right there. That right there is where it'll jab right into you and then a little bit of blood will come out and then it'll be nice and sore for you. Okay, so let's see. Two and two on each side on my seven and a quarter and we are all the way microed out here. So we're just gonna put, be able to pop a few micros in or we can wear it Bruce loose like that. But I think if we get our um, this is a Bergion, or no, this is not a Bergion. These are kind of expensive, these Bob Labs, but I really like them. Um, you're probably going to end up with one of these Bergion, Bergion or whatever it is, 7767s. These are really good. Get these spring bar tools, guys. Get, get a nice couple screwdrivers and get yourself a, a nice uh, spring bar tool because these are the tools that you are going to use on a regular basis when you're doing this stuff.
So what's happening here is I cannot see what I'm doing. And these uh, links are tight fitting in there. Oh, we already moved in one. No, we didn't. Oh, I know what it is. So when I was removing that plastic, some of that plastic um, was actually in the um, in the end link of the uh, right here. So it's super tight in there. That's just me getting overzealous and sized a million bracelets. So I think I can just go, go, go. But sometimes it helps to slow down a little bit. Now, if you can get if you can get one side in there, you almost don't need the spring bar tool. And a lot of people, will, you get one side in there and then just kind of use your yeah, don't do that though and shoot it towards your eye, but I personally don't like to do it this way. Yeah, for one, I'm not very good at it, but I know a lot of guys do it with just their fingernails. It's still a little loose, but that's fine because you can get it to ride up a little bit there. So I think we pretty much checked most things. And I know we went crazy long on this video, I'll have to edit some. So go ahead and peel the rest of the plastic off. Definitely get this back. Don't leave this back plastic on, guys. I don't know why people leave that on. Get that off there. So finishing on the watch looks good. Everything looks good there. Yeah, that's killer. That's perfect. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next bit. Uh, well, I can't leave you like that. I gotta give you a loom chart, right? Yeah, there it is. Great loom on that. Great loom on the Trasca. Great loom on the big old 3D printed monster. All right, it was a long video, but pretty cool nonetheless. Well, um, the watches. Thanks.